Hello everyone. Today we're going to start building a proper body for this thing. This is a 1913-ish Model T chassis with a homemade body on it. I got this last summer at a swap meet with the intention to do this project. And what we're going to do is build a proper factory touring car body that this would have had in 1913, like this one. Now this is going to be a pretty big project with a lot of skilled trades going into it like carpentry, metal fabrication, body and paint, upholstery, among other things. Nothing of which I haven't done already, but still a lot. So this video series is probably going to take a while to make. There's still a lot of research I need to do, a lot of parts I need to acquire, but we can at least get started right now. So this is what I have to start with. I got a few other little things, like this, which is an entire left front body panel off an original 13 Touring car. Now, if you're not familiar with it, yeah, the camera's not placed very well for this, but it goes about here. Now, obviously, the driver's door is not functional, it's just an outline. So this is all one panel, which is typical from 1913 through 25. And uh, i got a pair of rear door skins. Now, these are 1913, you can tell, because this is the only year the doors went down to the bottom of the body, and they had square corners. In 14, they raised the door line up about here, so they could make the sills wider, which made them stronger. And a few other little braces and things here and there, but that's about it. I have nothing for the front seat, nothing from the rear doors back. I plan to just make everything as I need it. Now, I should point out that if you're doing this yourself and metal fabrication is not really your thing, a lot of these panels are available brand new at reasonable prices. I'm going to try to make all this stuff just because, for me, it's cheaper. But, I don't know, I may end up buying some stuff eventually. It's too early to tell. What we're going to start with is making the sheet metal panels for the right front of the body. We're going to use this part as a pattern and make it a mirror image. Now since the door functions on that side, we'll have to make it in three separate panels. The cowl panel, the door, and the side. We'll start with the cowl panel because that looks the most difficult. To start with, I made a pattern of the left side cowl panel. I'm now marking it onto a piece of metal. I'm using 20 gauge cold rolled steel for this, which is what I use with most everything because it's cheap and available. I normally rough cut these panels a little on the large side and trim them down progressively as I begin to shape them. Next I take the rough cut panel over to the wheel and start to roll a convex shape into it, particularly the front upper corner where most of the curve is. At this point it's really starting to take shape. Next I cut the pattern out right at the crease of the upper bead and I'm now marking it on the panel. Now putting in the crease of the bead with this roller that I got from Harbor Freight. I don't have any rollers that are the perfect shape for this bead, so after putting the crease in it, I form the rest of the bead with hand tools. I'm using two heavy pieces of metal to sandwich the sheet metal in to prevent distortion from under the bead. With the bead finished and the top part trimmed down, I'm now shrinking the top edge to put some curve in the panel with a shrinker stretcher tool that I got from Harbor Freight. As you can see on this example piece, the part with the bead doesn't want to go around curves because when it does, either the part with the bead on it needs to stretch or the part under it needs to shrink. Neither want to do that, so the bead ends up trying to straighten back out. There's a few ways to fix this problem. The way I'm doing it is by heat shrinking the part under the bead. This is done by warming up 
one small section at a time of a high spot and then beating it down with a hammer while it's cooling. Comparing it to the left side, it looks like I put a little too much curve in it, but that's easy to fix. What's important is it's really taking shape. Next I cut out the pattern on the front where the panel is to meet the firewall to bend that edge over. I like to point out that every time I cut something out of this pattern I take it back to the original and compare it to make sure nothing's getting distorted. Now I'm folding the front edge over with this heavy duty metal brake that I homemade myself because Harbor Freight doesn't sell one this size. And then we go through the exact same routine for the lower bead. And that's done. The next and last step would be to bend this edge over for the door jam. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because even though in theory I know where this is going to go from the pattern, I don't know in reality because the body structure just hasn't been made yet. And I want at least one panel where I can adjust the door gap because when you're constructing or seriously reconstructing a body, there's always, there's always measurements here and there where they just don't come out as planned and you'll wish you had a way to adjust it. So what I'm going to do is wait until the structure is built and I have the front door gap from there to the side panel where I want it and just hinged right where I want it. Then put this panel on and mark where I want the door gap to be and then finish it. Now, it's still kind of roughed out a bit. The edges of each bead, they're finished off better on the original. I haven't yet figured out how I'm going to do that, but I'll worry about that later. Still got a high spot in it. But from the back, it's got like a pretty natural curve to it, which is about what it should be. It's still far from perfect, but it's an actual panel. And in an hour or two, I can make this into a proper finished panel. So I'm going to put this aside and start on something else. Now next we'll make the body side panel for the right side. So starting off, I'll make another pattern. Now I'd like to point out that because we're patterning the right side, which has a functional door, there should be a door gap on this side that we need to take into account when measuring the length. But with this pattern, I'm only determining the exact height and the general length. We'll worry about the rest of it later. Another thing I'd like to point out on this I just discovered a while ago is at first glance, you'd probably assume that the top and bottom beads are parallel with each other, but they're not. This body actually progressively gets taller as it goes back. It's a full inch taller here than it is here. And it's not enough of a difference to really be noticeable, but it is enough to really give you a headache if you just assume they're parallel instead of constantly checking and rechecking the originals and the patterns. This part was even more difficult to bend over because of all this metal I left on it. Now there is kind of a reason why I did this. This part here is supposed to bend back up and have a tab on top of here, which is where the tack strip attaches to that holds the armrests on. And that tab curves in as it goes back and meets the front seat backrest. But I didn't need to leave this much on it. So, note to self. Now, before putting the lower bead in the panel, I'm checking the pattern I made of the left side panel against the right rear door, because this door is going to set against the panel that I'm making. I'm checking the distance between the beads, and marks are right on target looking at the distance between the creases here. 
So that means I can keep using this pattern. If it were different, I'd have to make a new pattern for the height based off this door. It's not uncommon for car bodies from any decade, even up to present day, to be not perfectly symmetrical from side to side. So it's important to keep that in mind when making panels like this. The sides don't really need to match each other, they just need to match themselves. And the whole thing one more time. And the lower bead is done. Now I'd like to point out at this point that the upper bead, the edge is bent over 90 degrees on the top. The lower one is not quite that because the panel curves in as it goes down. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you, you'll see later on when we start installing it. Next part we're forming is the door jam against the rear door. Now I marked it on the side panel according to the pattern I made, and right now I'm standing the door up against it with the door lines parallel to see if the beads on the top line up, they should be parallel with each other. The height doesn't really matter, they're just sitting next to each other. But the upper beads look to be parallel with each other, or close enough, so that's a good line for the door jam, so we'll plan on that. Now my original plan was to bend this edge over with the brake. The problem is I'm a moron. I already bent both edges all the way up, so it's not going to fit in the brake. I could straighten these back out, but they're already shaped pretty good, and I don't want to go through all that hammering and all that again, so I'm going to bend this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to find a flat piece of metal about this long with a sharp edge on it, clamp it to this side, clamp like a piece of wood or something on the other side, and then just beat it over with a hammer. Not the most sophisticated, but it will work. And I cut a piece of metal to size, put it right on the line. I got a piece of wood underneath. I also made some little steel shims to go inside the beads to keep them from collapsing when I hammer it over. So let's try it out. And we did it. Not the cleanest bend I've ever done, but it is in a straight line. And the beads still have their shape in them at the end, mostly. After a little filing, it'll be okay. Next, the door jam for the front door. Now, like I've said before, we need to keep the door gap in mind. So, I looked around at a few of the other cars around here and I found a door gap between an eighth inch to three sixteenths inch looks the best, at least to me. So what I'm going to do is pattern the length of this panel and subtract an eighth inch from it. And later on when we start constructing the body, if more or less gap is needed, I'll adjust that with the door. So I'll do the whole routine again. And that's done. So next step, as you can see, the panel's flat, straight up and down. We need to get it to curve in, which we'll do by running these ends through the shrinker. Now, the rear, I already have the rear door, so I'm going to shrink it to match that. The front, I don't have a pattern for, so I'm going to get it kind of like the rear, only a little more subtle, which is about how it should be. And if it needs to be adjusted later on, that's fine. This is really easy to move around. I would also like to point out that I'm shrinking these sides evenly. In other words, I shrink a little bit on one side, then turn it around and shrink a little on the other side, as opposed to doing everything on one side while leaving the other flat. It, uh, helps to prevent distortion. And look at that! 
That is neat. It's not quite perfect, but it's good enough. All right. So at this point, it could be finished. The only thing left to do is the edge on here for the armrest. Now, I could just leave this alone and just weld a piece on here or bolt something on when the body's being assembled, but I'm gonna try to form it on just like the left side. So I'll try and figure out how to do that. So I'm doing this with pretty much just a pair of pliers. I can't really use any machine techniques or anything like that because this this part is not straight, it curves in around the back, like so. Actually, it's going pretty easy. I thought when I started bending this up, it would straighten out the bead here, but it's not doing that at all. The bead's holding its shape really well. So that's good. And that's finished. Very pleased with how that came out. So we're done with this. It's down to little stuff like the nail holes, the bolt holes. I, I gotta notch both sides for the door strikers. And I could run the file across the top and bottom beads. They could use it, but for now, it's good enough, so I'll throw it in the pile and move on to something else. Next step is the right front door. Now, this is gonna have a few more challenges than the other panels. Like for one thing, like the rear doors, it has vertical beads and the panel's also curved. So when making this, we'll probably get some distortion problems around here like we did with the cowl panel. And kind of worried about that because a panel this size is gonna be difficult to file or sand, especially with beads all around it. Another thing is these corners here where the beads meet, they're really sharp. They have a really sharp crease in them on the edge. And at the moment, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that. I might have to make a tool for that. So, but most of all, I'm out of time. So whenever I get back to this project, we'll get to work on the right front door.